Hello, I'm Lee Hatcher from Hammond Care Public Affairs at our Miranda site, continuing the profile series, a series of great stories and conversations with people with long-term service in our organisation. Michael Kearney has a great story with Hammond Care. In 1999, in his mid-20s, he began as a garden maintenance worker at Hammondville. Today, he heads up the very considerable arena of property and capital works across all of Hammond Care. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Lou. When you were at school, your dad, who was a builder, wanted you to follow in his footsteps. What happened there? Look, I was from a, a large family of seven kids, and uh, most of us boys, I think, spent many a weekend and school holidays on the job site. Um, you know, I think the default position for, for most of us was to head down the same path Dad did in carpentry. Um, but I think, like many kids getting to the end of year 12, um, didn't really know what I wanted to do. I had a few options, but, but carpentry wasn't one of them. What do you think about that? I think you just want to be in work, you know, um, pay my way and, um, and, and do something. So uh, he was still actively looking for, for work for me, but I think it was, um, you know, it was just one of those things. Uh, you don't enjoy doing it and move on to something you want to do. You were quite determined not to do it actually not to follow in his footsteps. Look, I like doing uh, outdoors things. Uh, I even thought of doing PE teaching, you know, teaching of some description. Um, it just, just wasn't carpentry. Yeah. So you ended up green keeping? Did that, yeah. I think mum found the uh, apprenticeship, uh, or at least pointed me in the right direction, and um, I applied for it. It was, a, it was a, a sought after apprenticeship. I think it was over 50 that applied for it, so I was lucky enough to get that. And uh, for a young guy, working outdoors on a golf course, is, it's as good as it gets. So, um, but yeah, first year apprentice, you're getting 145 bucks a week, you know, living out of home, paying the bills. There wasn't a lot left at the end of the week, but um, I was working outside. So it was, uh, uh, it was something I enjoyed doing. What brought you to Hammond Care and when did that happen? Look, in, in 1999, I was working uh, in landscape maintenance for Mount Pritchard Community Club and uh, there was a, an advert in the local paper for a landscape gardener at a nursing home at Hammondville. Um, I didn't know where Hammondville was and I didn't know what aged care was. Um, so, you know, it was, uh, but I think it was appealing to be uh, looking after a, a fairly big uh, area of grounds, um, putting to use the skills that I'd, I'd learnt in the trade. So uh, it was, you know, it was a good opportunity for me to actually go out on my own and uh, do something different. So I wasn't going into it, you know, specifically for aged care. Um, so I, I didn't know much about it. It just happened to be the job that was on offer at the time. That was 1999. Yeah. Down the track, the maintenance manager left. Yeah. And what happened then? Look, um, you know, that was, that was probably a few years later in, in 01, and uh, the, the maintenance manager engineer at the time had left uh, Hammondville. Um, and I think it was, uh, you know, it was Stephen uh, and Sally that was uh, out in the village grounds, you know, one sunny afternoon, and I think quite innocently I'd actually said to them, look, if there's anything I can do to help during this transition, let me know. And uh, Sally had come back to me a day or two later and said, look, what do you think about uh, giving this job a go yourself? Um, uh, you know, probably a little bit taken back at first because I wasn't actually aiming towards that. I was quite happy doing what I was doing, but I think it was the start of uh, a new path for me, and it was. Um, it was a good opportunity. Um, yeah, and I, look, at the time, Hammond were only operating from um, Hammondville. You know, there was no residential services in, in other areas, and for that matter, no hospital uh, services None either. of this? No, none of no. this. And, um, you know, so it was, it was a lot smaller, and, uh, but the role at Hammondville still offered um, an opportunity to actually change direction and, um, and apply myself in, in, uh, in a different area. You're one of these classic stories, and there are quite a few, of Hammond Care growing its own. What's that been like for you? Look, it's, 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 been, a, it's been a ride. Um, as I said, the, the growth has been uh, very steady, particularly in the last seven or eight years. I've had the opportunity of actually uh, taking on new experiences and, and uh, going into different avenues that I'd, I never thought I would. Um, so, you know, being able to be mentored by, I guess, some of the um, some of the, the leaders and senior people in Hammond has been great. Some have moved on, but some are still in the executive today. Um, so, you know, there's been some good opportunities to, um, uh, you know, 
going to different arenas. So fast forward to today and you're on the executive heading up Property and Capital Works. Tell us what that encompasses. Look, uh, Property and Capital Works is one of uh, I think seven enabling portfolios in Hemmen. So, um, you know, the enabling portfolio's uh, role is to do, just as the name suggests, to enable the uh, service portfolios to deliver care. Um, so we support the residential uh, hospitals and Hemmen at Home uh, services in a variety of areas. And my team's uh, uh, purpose uh, is both in property and capital work. So the property guys really I mean, I call them the gatekeepers for Hammond Care. You know, they're the guys that are um, managing safety and compliance um, on site. Uh, you know, they're, they're doing everything from fixing light globes and uh, maintaining, you know, um, HVAC systems. So, you know, they've got a really important role. You know, we've got over 20 odd uh, trades guys uh, on the books with many, many years of experience, uh, much more than I've got. So we rely on these guys to really uh, maintain these facilities. Um, you know, we're not always employing them just for their uh, trade skills. I mean, there's definitely uh, a bigger component to it. And we always spend a lot of time making sure that the people we get in are, are aligned with Hemmen Care and, and actually get what Hemmen Care is about. Um, you know, the interviews that I've sat in, um, you know, we spend a lot of time asking questions and probing around those areas. And, um, you know, one of the things we say to them um, during the interview is that it's OK to sit down in the middle of the day and have a cup of coffee with a, with a resident. Um, you know, we get a lot of applicants that kind of sit back and how good's this? But it's a it's something that we really look for. Um, you know, the, the Capital Works team is much smaller. Um, you know, their role is uh, you know liaising with the various consultants um, in the design, um, you know, approval process and the delivery of Capital Works like this one here at Miranda. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of both internal and external stakeholders that they're dealing with day in day out and. You know, they're building uh, the buildings that our residents and patients and clients have got to live in for the next 40 years. So this is the accommodation over here? Yeah, so this is um, one of the entrances where we go into, I think we're going through one of the units actually, one of the apartments. So we'll have a look through some two bedroom or two bedroom study apartments. Yeah. We may have a look at uh, the pool in the, in the gym area. This is the wellness centre, so this is where the, uh, the pool is and the, uh, the gym over here. Yeah. Um, we've got consult rooms here as well. Um, and this is actually separated from the coffee shop uh, and the play area uh, quite separately. And we've actually got this linked into uh, this first wing of apartments. So that's down there. Down this yeah. corridor here, yeah, we've got apartments down there, which, uh, you know, when you have a look through them, very, very spacious, very open. In fact, um, you know, I think we're, we're probably ahead of the game there in terms of its space. So a lot of the older accommodation in this area um, that's being offered is much smaller. Um, so we actually have a look through those uh, two bedroom. Uh, apartments and two bedroom and study apartments, they're very, they're very big. Uh, the verandas are quite large. Um, uh, so the, the architects done a really good job in actually uh, ensuring that there's plenty of space for people that are downsizing coming into these apartments. Like many in Hammond Care, you're planning into the future in the years ahead. How far ahead and what's that growth look like to you? Look, we've got, you know, in any project, we've got uh, many years planning, whether it's, uh, you know, in the acquisition of land or whether it's through to uh, uh, getting development approval through council. So some projects like this can take, um, as I said, many years and, and two, three, four years. But, you know, we are doing um, uh, project plans 10 years in advance. We're looking strategically at property strategies at uh, you know, over 20 years. So there is a lot of uh, forward planning that goes into it. and. Uh, um, uh, you know, it's important that we put that hard yards in early. Hammond Care is well known for its building design and very intentional in that. Where do you see that moving in the next 10 to 20 years, Mike? You know, Hammond Care is you know, nationally and internationally recognised for their dementia design. And uh, the Meadows, which was built, I think, in 95, is still, um, you know, it's, it's still one of those facilities that is showcased at, at many a design workshop. Um, you know, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into ensuring that the that uh, the design principles are applied in in, in all our buildings. Um, you know, a lot of those uh, principles won't change moving forward, but I think um, consumer expectations will change. You know, there's no doubt that you know the traditional quarter acre block in in uh, you know in Sydney is a thing of the past. So people's expectations of large open areas um, aren't as high anymore. I mean, we, we still build um, you know facilities with good open spaces, but um, I think you'll see more uh, you know, vertical villages and more multi-level facilities 
where outdoor spaces, for example, are, uh, are, are, a, are a terrace and a balcony. Um, and that seems to be what we're designing more um, and what consumers are actually expecting. For you personally, tell me about two types of days that you have. What are your best days in this job? What are your most challenging days? Look, I think the best days are, are you know, they, they could be naturally projects that go well. But I think um, the better days, I think, is when you can actually sit back and reflect on uh, your contribution. Now, whether it's uh, the staff that you've employed. You know, we spoke earlier about the, um, you know, the time we spend on getting the right staff. Um, you know, when you walk through facilities and actually see that happening, you know, we've got property guys that are sitting down with residents every day, um, engaging with residents and uh, hearing their life story and actually having that cup of coffee. I think when you can kind of sit back and see that happening, it, it actually lets you reflect that you've actually made a contribution, albeit um, at a distance, you've been able to contribute to the success of the, uh, the operations. I think the, the challenging days, look, it's the days when you wake up and you don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, it's those complex jobs that um, you've got to work through, whether it's uh, a building project or whether it's a business plan that you've been working on, that you just don't know what the result's going to be. You know, as long as I can contribute and make a difference, um, that's, what, that's what it's been about for me. You look at something like this and I think, well, there's a big difference here. Tell us what your dad's saying about where you've moved now. So he ended up getting his own way in a way, didn't he? He did, and he reminds me of that. Um, <laughs> but um, look, all my family um, have all been very supportive. Um, you know, my wife puts up with me, you know, and she encouraged me. So I think, you know, I've got a strong family network and that's important. With each person in the Profile Series, I ask them this one final question. What floats your boat outside of your work at Hammond Care? Look, as a, as a young family, we love, uh, we love travel. We've done a lot of travel. And um, in that travel, uh, I've taken a bit of a, a love for photography. And uh, I'm somewhat of an amateur, but I've taken a love for that. So uh, I've moved into uh, a bit of a, a boy toy with my son who likes radio control gear. So we've, we've uh, invested in a, a, a drone, or a remote control drone. Fantastic. Which is a... Uh, <laughs> is a boy's toy and yeah. it allows me to do a bit of aerial photography but allows uh, us to have a bit of time together. What's your wife say? Well she keeps reminding me it is my toy, not, yeah, that's not my right. son's toy. That's my point actually, <laughs> so, yes. Um, but it is, uh, it is a bit of fun that we can have as a, as a family and uh, yeah, something to do on the side. Michael, thanks so much indeed for joining us on the Profile Series. Thanks Lee.